Boston did not love its Celtics. Despite winning championship after championship in the 1950s and 1960s, the local entry in the National Basketball Association had never been able to capture a loyal following or the sporting imagination of the city. Beantown fans would flock to Fenway Park in the Boston Garden to see the Red Sox and Bruins play baseball and hockey, respectively. But when it came to witnessing some of the world's greatest athletes perform acts of unsurpassed physical artistry around a basketball hoop, the interest level declined precipitously. Attendance figures tell the sad story. Between 1959 and 1966, the prime years of the Celtics dynasty, eight consecutive world championship banners were raised to the dusty garden rafters, but only an average of 6,783 fans per game bothered to make the trek down Causeway Street. Since the garden had a seating capacity of 14,000, this meant that the Celtics regularly played in a building that was less than half full. There were always tickets, remembered Boston Globe sports reporter John Powers in the short season. A book detailing his experiences as a lifelong Celtics fan covering the team. Fellow journalist and team chronicler Jeff Greenfield also detected a lack of broad interest in the club. Building the world's greatest basketball team in the city of Boston had about it the quality of a Twilight Zone episode, in which a man walks down a busy thoroughfare desperately asking people to notice him, but going unseen and unheard, he wrote. Theories abound as to why this was the case, the most prevalent being that the city lacked the hoop tradition of a New York or a Chicago to appreciate the magnitude of the Celtics' accomplishments. The Boston public school system, after all, had eliminated the sport from its curriculum back in 1925, meaning that thousands had grown up with no basketball in their sporting diet. In addition, Bostonians seem more temperamentally inclined to lace up a pair of skates and play hockey than go to basketball games in the dead of winter. All told, these factors made the city an unlikely place to spawn a basketball legend. According to Bob Ryan, a longtime Boston sports columnist who penned several books on the Celtics, yet the great Holy Cross College basketball teams of the late 1940s had no problem selling out the Garden especially when players like Bob Cousy, George Kafton, and Dermy O'Connell electrified crowds with their up-tempo ball movement offense, the same kind of game the Celtics employed during their dynasty years. Indeed, when Cousy was a freshman member of the 1947 NCAA championship squad, more popularly known as the Fancy Pants AC, the tiny Worcester school was the toast of the town. Holy Cross fever gripped the hub in the same manner a Red Sox pennant race did in the hot summer months of July and August. As we knocked off one opponent after another, the fans of Boston and New England went crazy, Cousy said. They poured in the garden to see us pile up our string of victories.